Good evening guys, how are we? Welcome along to this video. This video I'm going to be showing some things from over the last three years of metal detecting and, uh, and I hope you all enjoy it. It's just a little kind of show you, show and tell of my finds and, uh, and what we'll be doing next year. So I'm just going to move on and I'll show you some of the finds. Right guys, so for any of you guys that do foreshore hunts, this is from a firing range and you should end up with insane amounts of bullets like this. This is one tub that so fits in these. I've got three or four of these upstairs. I'm only going to show one tub because I feel that's all I need to show. And there you go, you should end up with insane amounts of bullets like this. Enfields, musket balls, pistol balls. We've got mystery bullets. We've got two ringers. We've got Martini Henry's. We've got three ringers and uh, and that's the way it should go we've even got a canister shot there we go from a cannon in fact two canister shots there you go from that cannon at Dumbarton Castle so we know the stuff there we know what we're looking for you know that's entirely why we've been on that for sure we're looking for canister shots we're looking for proofs the medieval people were there uh, we're moving Forward with that, uh, we're looking for Roman, we're looking for Viking, everybody was there, you know, Iron Age people, you know, there's every chance of finds here. We also, uh, when we do these videos, uh, we also follow newspaper leads, so as a little tip for anybody, if you want to find history, sometimes if you follow the leads, and we do this with our magnet fishing, we follow newspaper leads because the SIAA, which is the Vale Leaving, a fishing organisation were actually cleaning up the river so as they were cleaning up the river there was guys that we were speaking to who were telling us parts of the river that have never been done they've never got to and they've never managed to clean it up and uh, so that's why we started making magnet fishing videos at these places because they were telling us some of the finds that they were having and again we moved on to some of the areas and we were finding quite a lot of similar things to what they were pulling out the water so here we go, this was one that's just from the five range, but there you go, you should end up with insane amounts of bullets, you know, if you do a firing range. And, uh, and this is a classic example of it. Moving on guys, to people that do land hunts, well, again this is one tub, I have three of these that are full of pennies, and you should end up with epic and insane amounts of pennies and, uh, and that's from my land hunts uh, again I've only showed one tub of them but uh, I'm just showing people that it's out there to be found you'll get them and they came out quite crusty George V, Victorian, Edward the Seventh. you know we've got George the Sixth. you generally find a kind of mixture of them very rare that you find a lot of George the Thirds up here but in certain places you do uh, but some places are absolutely caked in kind of modern day money, old style, 10 pence, 5 pence, Queen Victoria, you know. We end up with insane amounts of coins and uh, this is, should be what you're kind of working towards. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of detecting in three years so this is just one tub and I thought I'd take the time to show you some of the coins. So guys, here's the coins from some beach hunt, and again, you should end up with mass amounts of coins from the beach. And there uh, are people that can't find them, I don't know why, because they're out there. I've took this off a beach at Helensborough this year, mostly from Helensborough. And there we go, that's most of the coins from Helensborough Beach. And uh, there's still about, I think there's a couple, maybe like a jar still that isn't there, but it's down in the... Uh, garage where I left it but basically uh, that is about 100 or 200 coins but uh, this is a nice selection again to show you that these coins are out there to be found on the foreshore and if you can't find them I mean I don't know why because I'm finding hundreds of them everywhere again there's an offer to anybody who wants to come and do the beaches with us more than welcome uh, I've always said it, beaches are free, anybody wants to do them with us, you're more than welcome, we'll show you where we find stuff. I don't mind, and uh, 
just to give you a wee idea of what we find in beaches, quite a lot of coins from Victoria to now. Very rare, but you do come up every now and again and get a nice old one. I think that one was my William the Third, which I found right outside the oldest house in Helensborough, which dates back to 1610. So I think William the Third is 1690 something. So it dates in when uh, that house was probably in use and it had a moat, which is no longer there. Sorry, not a moat. It had a. It had an old jetty. Sorry, not a moat. And uh, the jetty is to run out to, uh, right into the sea, but it's no longer there, so that's the kind of area we've been hitting, and that's where you do find some old coppers and things like that. Uh, Georgia Fudd as well, that they do kind of crust up once they come out of the sea. I think this one was George the Second, but it's really crusty as well. And uh, again, doing the beaches, these are the kind of things that you do come across. So guys, anybody that does land and beach hunts should end up with relics as well. This is just a selection of relics I've picked out to just kind of show you the different relics that come out. This is a Georgian toy cannon. Of course we've got livery buttons. Okay, toy soldiers. World War II. We've got lovely Victorian butterfly brooches. Pope medallions. Pope John Paul II. We've got Georgian buckles, bronze. We've got old pocket watches that came out. That's one Dave found in the foreshore and they gifted it to me. So big thanks to Dave from Relic Hunt in Scotland uh, for the lovely watch. It's going on a display later on in the year, so I'll show you that as well. A little bit later in the year, again, headless lead soldier. Absolutely fantastic in detail. Of course, here was the lovely hawking whistle that I found, Georgian whistle. I've got a little, apparently 1700s gun as well, apparently they fired little ball bearing bullets. Loads of different saddler's badges. This one I found on the foreshore was an absolute cracker from Leaf, Leaf Saddlers. Again, we've got another Victorian pencil sharpener, which is lovely. Again, we've got medallions, George V for his wife. I think this one's Edward VII, and uh, it'll probably be a famous ship. Again, I've got a lovely boat that I found on the foreshore as well. Of course, you end up with things like this. And of course this one is a George the First and it's a trade weight. Some of them are actually scale weights because they only say two ounce on them so you have to be careful when I deem them. Generally a trade weight will have these kind of free markings here. And, uh, and that's how you ID them. Again we've got a lovely motorbike, lead motorbike that I found on the beach. Of course it's missing its wheel but I've just slipped it back into place to show where it came from. And, uh, and these are just a selection of relics that you can uh, find on the beach, you know. Uh, you find them inland as well. Some of these are from beach, some of these are from inland. It was just to show you a kind of selection of relics. This, of course, was the first scout leader badge that I found, Lord Baden Powell. That was at Dumbarton Castle. A lovely medallion, uh, I think it's George V. And he's Again, here's a lovely cross that I found uh, at Drum Chapel. And, uh, and I mean I've done quite a lot of the local farms where I used to stay, I've now moved up towards Stirling Way and, uh, and I'm having a lot more success up there so keep watching guys because that's where a lot of the videos are going to be coming from in 2017 uh, we'll be up from Stirling in that kind of area this here is a casket mount of a lion's face and I'm just kind of generally going through little odds and ends that I've found to show you what you can find Town a green up police button, which is rare. I'm going to frame that because I want to keep it. That's not one I'll ever give away. You end up with things like this, which are pipe tampers. This one is an absolute cracker. We think it's off a desk weight and it's a lead parrot. I always remember when I found that uh, Lewis Mud Shark was up here 
and they detected with us and they had them out in one of the fields in Cardross and, uh, and I found that and I thought it was pretty cool, didn't find anything much else that day, a couple of coins, he got a nice bit of silver, but uh, there we go, that was a lovely lead parrot. And, uh, and these are kind of just a selection of things that come out on our fields. You know, it's a whole really, really, really big selection of things. And, uh, and I hope you've all enjoyed seeing some of them. So I'm going to move on again and I'm going to show you the World War II things now. Just as I was packing away there, I meant to show this. This is actually a coin cup weight. I think it was called. I'm sure that's what Dave called it, a coin cup weight. There you go, I just thought I would show that as well, because that's a nice old find as well. So guys, here's another little selection of things that I found, and they're World War II based, and uh, kind of round about, a couple I'm going to show that are a little bit older, and uh, some are pretty cool. So this one here is, of course, a special constable's badge from Glasgow, which I think is a police badge. Uh, loads of World War II buttons. We've got military badges. From all different regiments. Of course, all found here because they were all stationed here and I'm in between five artilleries. And a lot of people might not know that. Navy buckles. Got an Egyptian regiment from Gloucester. Highland Light Infantry, which is a Scottish regiment. Royal Horse Artillery, which I think was a Dumbarton regiment. Royal Gower Rifles, which was a Dumbarton. Indian Regiment and uh, World War Two medal. Lots of other great finds in there, uh, and just hit a little show out, show you about a little, and uh, you'll see World War Two bullets. Quite a few of them, and uh, here's the older ones I want to show you. This one here is, I think, it's a loom weight. Which is possibly old 1700s, I think. This one here is a pencil topper, which is Victorian, which is an old car which I found in amongst there, so I thought I would show you it. You do also get lead soldiers, which I have an insane amount of. First one I ever found. And, uh, and this is a little saddler's badge of a horse. I think it's a World War II saddler's badge. Could be wrong on that, but you do get quite a lot of saddlers badges and things like that. This one here is the front lock hammer of an old rifle. We don't know if it's 17 or 1800s, but uh, I never ever got an idea on that, but it's definitely like a flint lock hammer for an old rifle. So moving on, and I'm going to show you some even more stuff. <laughs> So guys, here's another selection of relics that people find on the field, which is buckles. I've only showed some of them. I've got like two or three tubs of baby, baby milk fill of them. Uh, buckles, generally they're mostly modern horse buckles. You do get the odd one that comes out like a nice children mount. 1700s buckles and a couple of spectacle buckles and things I've got. There you go, that's another Georgian one I've got. And uh, I'm going through this bit by bit here, and uh, you'll see again, these are some more relics you're going to come across. Crosses, lead camels, lead soldiers. This one here is a Stilton 1799, uh, 1899, sorry, I don't know if they made cheese Stilton, but I don't know how long they've been making cheese for. But uh, I have no idea what that's off of, if anybody knows. You get thimbles, old buttons. Victorian brooches, still with a pin in the back. Again, another brooch with fleur de lis, which the pin is missing. Okay, this is a, I think it's a coronation chair, possibly Victorian or Georgian, which is lovely in detail, minted in London. Get okay, bronze rings, parts of Georgian shoe buckles, bucket watches. More thimbles, fishing weights. I don't know. I've always thought they were scales. No, like a kind of scale it would hang, and uh, it would go either side of a set of sails. Could be wrong. Yeah, uh, you got old keys. You get like, statues of animals. Loads of stuff. Hem weight, dress weights. 
you know, dress weights to hold your dress down, saddlers, badges, there's just so much stuff in the field. Yes, yeah, so there's a thing we come across as well, which is the scouts, scouts badge, old tom back buttons, saddlers badges again. This one I found at Gilson with a bit of a design on it. Loads and loads of bale seals. So I'm just going to pause for a minute because I want to show you something. Actually, guys, you'll see I'm working from tubs, and uh, <laughs> this is some of the stuff that I'm not showing you, which I just thought I'd have a quick scoot through. Look at all the bag seals I've got, loads and loads and loads of them. There's loads of stuff that I'm just not showing, and uh, it's just because it, it's going to take up so much time in the video. And uh, but it's just to give you an idea that there is loads and loads of stuff out there to be found. Lots and lots of clay pipes, lots of them, mounts, all sorts of different things, badges, caps off something, you know. It's out there to be found guys, but uh, if you don't put the time and effort in then you certainly won't find it and, uh, and uh, you know I've put a lot of time and effort in this year and, uh, and I've reaped a lot of rewards because I've found a lot of great stuff. There's always one way uh, to find stuff and that's follow the history. It can be hard, there's going to have been people done it before you, but uh, you know soldier on because you will find stuff, it can be few and far between. And then you never know, you could just hit that field, it's like jackpot. And uh, and that's what we have done now with uh, one of our fields. We've kind of hit the jackpot. So I'm going to move on again, show you some more stuff. And uh, and then I'm going to have a wee chat with you. So guys, I've brought out a selection of George Ford and some tokens. And I'll show you the kind of tokens we get up here. These are like World War II tokens. This one here, I'm going to have to have a better look at it because it's like three coins I've found so far that I've got something on them and uh, I want a better look at them. That's could be older than what I've dated it. Uh, and I found this one on one of Dave's permissions, so it could be older than I've dated it. So I'm going to have a quick look at that again. Chinese coins, got French coins, we've got South African coins. That's uh, what a foreign country, but it's uh, definitely foreign. I never ever ID that. George Ford cartwheels. There we go. George Fourth pennies. It's just to show you a kind of selection of things that we get here. You know, that's a Vicky token. Again, that's another foreign coin. We'll have to have a quick look through a lot of these coins. That one there is an old token as well. Uh, it's foreign as well, I think. I found one of these which is in better condition. Uh, just a little mixture of foreign coins and token, that's something else that you'll pull out the fields here. So here we go guys, so just thought I would take the time to show you some of the silver and gold finds over the year. So have a look at some of the gold and uh, and this is a lovely buckle ring that I found at Ru. As you can see, lovely buckle ring. This is a gold and ruby ring I found at Helensborough. As you can see, lovely gold and ruby ring. Three rubies in it. I've had them tested, they are real rubies so that ring must have been worth a pretty penny. Apparently it's foreign so there we go, lovely little ring. Again, we've got a buckle ring, which I found, uh, must have been, I think it was old Kilpatrick, which is old, so it's a lovely old buckle ring. We've got a silver ring, 925, that I found. Found that towards Dumbarton. Found this silver ring towards Balog, it's got a little bit of design on it. And uh, this one was at Cardross in Gilston. And these are all places I'm not going back to. Of course I got a lovely gold coin earlier on in the year, if anybody's seen that doing the ploughing. <sighs> Beat me up because I couldn't go back to this farm because I still believe there's more great stuff there. There we go, lovely Vicky. Half sovereign. And uh, you should really accumulate, you know, metal detecting loads and loads of big silver. And there we go, Vicky silver. 
Georgie 6 silver, half crowns. Big Georgie 5, half crowns. We should have, I think these are florins, yep. Florins, George 5. You should accumulate 50 shillings. Again, I've got a lovely George of Third half crown, which is rare up here. You don't see too many of these coming out. So, again, a lovely George of Third half crown again. Part of a coin brooch. And you should accumulate multiple different types of silvers. Eh, William the Third. You know, Elizabeth the First Hammers. Should get brooches. Perhaps the silver buckles. Walking canes. Buttons. Part of a silver pocket watch chain I found in the beach. Parts of pocket watches that are silver. Silver brooches. You know, these are all the things that should be coming out. Eh? On people's permissions, you do get things like silver spoons as well. You know, you should accumulate a whole different type of silver. So I thought I would just show you some of mine over the years. And yeah, this was a lovely thimble that I found. It's silver. Probably one of the best condition thimbles. I got another one later on in the year on that field, which is silver. Which is absolutely lovely. You should get pocket watches. Hallmarked pocket watches. You should also get things like Sterling Silver Cats. <laughs> that was one of my cool things at uh, Gilston Farm. Sterling Silver Cat. You should also accumulate silvers like George IV, William IV as well, and, and loads of other different ones. You know, you'll get foreign silvers as well. Uh, not too many of them, but I do get foreign silvers every now and again. It's very hard. This is one of the first I ever found and it's an American 1817. I think it's a silver dime. But that was American. That was one of the first silvers that I ever found when I started metal detecting. So moving on and I'm going to show you a couple of other things as well. Right guys, just before we go I want to show you some of the more historical finds that came out in the better areas and I've just picked a couple of best finds. Spindle Whirl, Spindle Whirl, Spindle Whirl. Three Spindle Whirls are found up towards Stirling and Perth. Charles the Second Merck, of course, that I found in Stirling, which is a lovely find. Elizabeth. The first silver that I found, and of course, an Eddie the first penny which I found. The more historical the places you are, the more likely you are to find finds like this. They're rare, they're few and far between. You work hard enough, you put the time and effort in, and I guarantee you'll find them just like me. Uh, it's out there to be found, it's uh, following the history, you know, it can be long walks, but sometimes long walks. Uh, and fields equal, you know, good things, you know, sometimes you can just walk, walk, walk for an hour and then bang, historical find, bang, hammer coin and that's the way it works, you know, you could be going turner, 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 whatever and you know you're in a historical area, as soon as you start hitting those turners you're going, yes, right, we're talking Charles II, there's chance of Charles II and Silvers here could be chance of earlier, so that's what I always think when I find a turner, you know, I would really hammer around about that area, you know, it's just a little bit of advice for people, you know, that may be starting out in the hobby, you know, if you go into the historical areas and you start hitting Charles II Turners, have a look about, stick to that area, there may be long walks, there may be signals few and far between, but I guarantee if you put the time and effort in, you'll find good things. So guys, you've seen some of the finds now, and uh, basically in 2017 I'll be moving on, I'll be going back to Stirling, I'll be searching for King William the Lion's Lost Village, and, uh, and of course that obviously leads me to Stirling as well, <laughs> so whatever way, you know, I'm going to end up in Stirling. Uh, basically, there's going to be a lot of beach hunts through the harvest season, and uh, hopefully there'll be some pasture, we've got some pasture we want to finish off, and uh, and hopefully we'll manage to try and, you know, get a few farms, it just sometimes it will happen, sometimes it won't, it's kind of the wrong time of year to approach a farmer and ask him for permission, but you never know, well, 
we'll plod along, see what we can find, and uh, and hopefully 2017 will be even be an even better year than 2016, and we'll bring you some more historical finds. But until then, good luck, happy hunting, and I'll catch you in 2017. Bye for now.